I'm happy to be here in St. Mary's South, especially to give my 100% support and backing to the man who deserves the support of the people, not only of St. Mary's South, but the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Yeah. But before I get into that, I just want to thank Kelvin for winning out, well, congratulate him, I should say, for winning out the trophy and the first prize on Saturday in St. John City East. <laughs> it was very good to see him lift that trophy and to declare victory because I said this is the sign of things to come. The only sad and downside part of it, if I can put it that way, is that the person that he beat in the final match was none other than the Black Panther. So the South Tigers beat All Saints East and St. Louis in a thrilling final match. But that was good. And it was part of what was said earlier that when you see what's happening in the South, the South is an inspiration to the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Just to see you here tonight is an inspiration. And I know that you're resolute. And you've come here because you are defending democracy. I don't want to get too technical tonight. And so I just want to say that there are two very good articles that have been written on this whole issue of where we are as far as the law is concerned and the resignation. There was an article a few days ago written by a Mr. Willard. Very good article. If you get a chance to read it, you should read it. And in the Observer of today, an excellent piece by Brother Tabor, Charles Worth Tabor. And I want to commend Brother Tabor for a well-written article where he put the position very, very clearly. Now, we are at a stage now where the fight is for democracy. That is what this fight is about. It's a fight for democracy and the rule of our constitution. I have a copy of the constitution here tonight. And I want to let you know that we are standing on very firm ground as far as the Constitution is concerned. I heard the Speaker of the House recently, and I wonder really what is going on with the Speaker of the House. I don't want to say too much about him, because I think enough has been said about him. I heard the former Speaker and the chairman of the party, Dame Dejas Eliza. She was on radio this afternoon. And she said it in a way that I don't think anybody else could say it. But she rightfully put him in his place as a former speaker herself and really showed the nation that what he is attempting to do is to frustrate the will of the people to stifle democracy and to turn the clock backwards, it will not happen. The will of the people is supreme. And the will of the people is embodied in our constitution. I was looking through a book recently, and those very words are the words that are written on the pages, written by a constitutional scholar by the name of Dr. Alexis, Dr. Francis Alexis. And he says, the will of the people shall form the basis of government 
in a democratic society. Now I want you to really digest what was just said. It is the will of the people that shall form the basis of government in a democratic society. It is the people who must decide. Now in January, you decided who you wanted to represent you. Did you not? Yes. And who did you decide on? Yes. Now, they have challenged his right to sit in parliament not because they say that he thief any votes, not because he engaged in any bad play, any fraud, any misbehavior, misfeasance or malfeasance. They are using a technical argument to try to sneak Samantha Marshall into Parliament through the back door. That is not the will of the people. How can they expect to impose someone on the constituency who the people have rejected? And we know what they're up to. They have a right to challenge, so we say, okay, nothing is wrong with that. If you want to challenge, you challenge. And we allow them to challenge. But the same constitution that gives Samantha Marshall or Mr. Cosworth Aaron the right to challenge is the same constitution that gives Kelvin Simon the right to resign when you want to. You can't have it one way and try to leave out the other way. The constitution is not for one side, the constitution is for all. And so they came and they're trying to make sure that they can push Shuggy out so that they can push Samantha in. And Shuggy decided they're not going to do it that way. They're not going to do it that way. Let us go back to the people's court. Let us go to the people if you say I'm not the right man for St. Mary's so let the people decide. And so, I want to tell you that the section in the Constitution is very clear. And just like they felt that they have grand legs, well, for your legs grandier than for them the legs. <laughs> so, what they were hoping and planning is that they would be able to get a backdoor decision. And you know, I never see anything like that. A man resigned from parliament, prime minister frightened, said, no, you shouldn't resign. Speaker said, no, you shouldn't resign, and you can't resign. They bring all kind of yes man and yes woman to say, no, you shouldn't resign. But we say, that the section, section 125 of the Constitution is very clear. It gives a discretion to the member of parliament to resign if he wants to resign. And he's not just resigning to say he's had enough. He's not resigning to say that he does not want to represent his people. He's resigning to say, let us go back to the starting line. If you think you are the choice for the people, line up, sign me and let's go. What is wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with that, brothers and sisters. And just for those who may have missed exactly what the Constitution says, the Constitution says, any person, you hear that? What we say? Any person is to be Simon a person. Okay, so we take the first part. So any person who is appointed or 
elected. Yes. Was he elected? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, to any office established by this constitution. Now the office of member of parliament is established by the constitution. Yes. And he was duly elected to that office. It goes on to say that such a person may resign from that office. You can't want it any clearer than that. May resign from that office. How they do it? By writing under his hand, addressed to the person or authority to whom he was appointed or elected. Except that is in cases where, for example, you're resigning from maybe ombudsman or you're resigning from some other office created by the constitution. But it says very clearly, the resignation of any person from membership of the Senate or the House of Representatives shall be addressed to the President or the Speaker as the case may be. In other words, if he chooses to resign, he resigned by writing a letter to the Speaker of the House. And that is what he did. But you know, I went and I checked a few other constitutions to see if Antigua is the only one that does it that way. And we are not the only one. For example, in Jamaica, in Jamaica, their constitution says, a person who is appointed, elected, or otherwise selected to any office established by this constitution, including the office of prime minister, or minister or parliamentary secretary, may resign from that office by writing under his hand addressed to the person or authority by whom he was appointed, provided that or except where a person who is a member of the House of Representatives, his resignation from the House shall be addressed to the Speaker. Plain, simple English. But I didn't stop there. I made a phone call to the law school in Jamaica. And I spoke to one of the senior professors there. And I asked if our interpretation is his interpretation. He told me yes. He read it, I said everything, he said yes. So I said all right then, I don't need to go any further. So Jamaica, they have the same provision and it is interpreted in the same way by learned scholars in Jamaica. So I didn't stop there. I went to Trinidad. In Trinidad, they say any person who is appointed or elected to or otherwise selected for any office established by this constitution, etc., etc., may do the same thing. Write a letter to the speaker and say you resign. So I call a senior counsel in Trinidad and I asked him for his opinion on what is written and he made it plain as we've been saying all along that the constitution is the supreme law of Antigua and Barbuda so if the constitution is saying to you that you can resign then obviously there is nothing further to it we went to Dominica. The same thing in Dominica. Resignation. Seat become vacant. And you send your letter to the Speaker of the House. I couldn't go further because I didn't go to Belize. But I'm not going to bother you with Belize tonight. Because in Belize, it's the same provision. They, their provision, I think, is section 137. And just in a few years ago, you had a member of parliament just resign from parliament. Nobody argued with him, nobody made no fuss. Just two weeks ago, Boris Johnson in England, he resigned from parliament. I heard somebody saying on the radio the other night 
that he resigned as Prime Minister. No! Boris Johnson has not been Prime Minister now for several years. He resigned as a parliamentarian. And he did so just so. He didn't have to qualify anything. He didn't have to give nobody no explanation. And so we're saying, brothers and sisters, tonight, that the will of the people must prevail. And Brother Kelvin Simon resigned from the position so that we will trigger a by-election. An election, a by-election is triggered under Section 41, Subsection 3 of the Constitution. Under that section, which is the one that the Speaker is confusing, I'm sorry to put it that way, but I cannot understand how he can bring up something that me feel if Boldface got a chance, Boldface would get it best. Because at least Boldface said, when you don't know, you just don't know. So he should have really just come up and say, look, we don't know. And we just don't know. But instead of saying that, he went on to utter what I can only say in the best possible language is utter foolishness. Now, section 41.3 is very clear. And it says that there are two ways that the seat of a parliamentarian will become vacant. In the first way, you don't have any choice in the matter. So for example, if you dissolve parliament, the seat is vacant, you have to move. If you're no longer a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda, then the seat becomes vacant. You don't have a thing to do. The seat is empty. When you go for your seat, no seat there. The other reason is if, for example, you get yourself in trouble and you have a problem with the law and you become disqualified by virtue of your conviction in the court or anything like that, that would make you automatically have a vacancy. But the one now that the speaker is telling Kelvin Simon that he must use he must dissociate himself from the United Progressive Party. He must resign from the United Progressive Party in order for him to resign from Parliament. Now, this is a family audience, so I wouldn't say what I want to say. But I'm telling you, I heard somebody talk about the southern end of a northbound cow. Well, whatever comes from there, I'm telling you, that is what I am hearing. And here we are tonight to say that we are satisfied that what Kelvin Shubi Simon has done, he has done it selflessly, he has done it in a heroic way, he has done it in defense of democracy. What he's saying is that the, the instructions given to him by the speaker, null and void, make no sense. We're going to have to challenge that decision in court. But he can save us the trouble and use the boldface prescription. That's all he has to do. But if he fails to do that, it may require us to go to court in order to challenge this nonsensical decision. I want to make it plain that what the section says about resignation is that once it is received by the speaker, it has effect. That's when it takes effect. He has no jurisdiction to accept or to reject. All he has to do is say, thank you very much, sir. And go about the business. 
he has no say as to whether he can accept or reject. The Constitution does not give him any power to accept or reject. So his actions are what you would call ultra-virus the Constitution. Don't make the Latin frighten you. It just means out of order. It just means you don't have the right to say so. Ultra-virus. Outside of your, you're acting outside of your power. Stay in your lane. And so, brothers and sisters, this is a very exciting time in many ways because whenever in politics you have to fight, you have to fight with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. When in politics you have to fight, you have to give it your all. You have to make sure that when you come out, you come out on the victorious side. And we are here tonight and so happy to see the good people of St. Mary's South here. Because we are going to stand side by side with you. We're going to side, stand side by side with Kevin, Kelvin Shuggy Simon. Because we know that he is the people's choice. And we are here tonight to defend the people's choice. And we are not going to allow any backdoor strategy to work. We want the voice of the people to prevail, prevail. Because as I said at the beginning, the will of the people shall form the basis of government in a democratic society. And we are here tonight to proclaim the will of the people and the will of the people shall prevail. Thank you very much. Very informative, very informative. So as you as you heard that anybody that wanna resign from parliament, just write in their own hand and resign from parliament. Nobody can tell you can't resign from nothing. You resign from anything you want to resign.